The Empire of Trebizond or the Trapezuntine Empire was a monarchy and successor state of the Byzantine Empire that flourished during the 13th through 15th centuries, consisting of the far northeastern corner of Anatolia the Pontus and the southern Crimea. The empire was formed in 1204 after the Georgian expedition in Chaldea, commanded by Alexios Komnenos a few weeks before the sack of Constantinople. Alexios later declared himself emperor and established himself in Trebizond modern-day Trabzon, Turkey. Alexios and David Komnenos, grandsons and last male descendants of deposed Emperor Andronikos I Komnenos, pressed their claims as «Roman emperors» against Byzantine Emperor Alexios V Doukas. After the Crusaders of the Fourth Crusade overthrew Alexios V and established the Latin Empire, the Empire of Trebizond became one of three Byzantine successor states to claim the imperial throne, alongside the Empire of Nicaea under the Lascaris family and the Despotate of Epirus under a branch of the Angelos family. The ensuing wars would see the Empire of Thessalonica, the imperial government that sprung from Epirus, collapse following conflicts with Nicaea and Bulgaria and the final recapture of Constantinople by the Empire of Nicaea in 1261. Despite the Nicaean reconquest of Constantinople, the emperors of Trebizond would continue to style themselves as «Roman emperors» for decades and continued to press their claim on the imperial throne. Emperor John II of Trebizond officially gave up the Trapezuntine claim to the Roman imperial title and Constantinople itself eleven years after the Nicaeans recaptured the city, altering his imperial title from «Emperor and Autocrat of the Romans» to «Emperor and Autocrat of all the East, Iberia and Peritea. The Trapezuntine monarchy would survive the longest among the Byzantine successor states. The despotate of Epirus had ceased to contest the Byzantine throne even before the Nicene Reconquest and was briefly occupied by the restored Byzantine Empire c. 1340, thereafter becoming a Serbian dependency later inherited by Italians, ultimately falling to the Ottoman Empire in 1479. Whilst the Empire of Nicaea had restored the Byzantine Empire through restoring control of the capital, it ended in 1453 with the conquest of Constantinople by the Ottomans. Trebizond would last until 1461 when the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II conquered it after a month-long siege and took its ruler and his family into captivity, marking the final end of the Roman imperial tradition initiated by Augustus 1488 years previously. The Crimean Principality of Theodoro, an offshoot of Trebizond, lasted another 14 years, falling to the Ottomans in 1475. Origins. Trebizond already had a long history of autonomous rule before it became the center of a small empire in the late Middle Ages. Due to its natural harbors, defensible topography and access to silver and copper mines, Trebizond became the preeminent Greek colony on the eastern Black Sea shore soon after its founding. Its remoteness from Roman capitals gave local rules the opportunity to advance their own interest. In the centuries before the founding of the empire the city had been under control of the local Gabras family, which, while officially still remaining part of the Byzantine Empire, minted its own coin. The rulers of Trebizond called themselves Megas Komnenos Great Komnenos", and, like their counterparts in the other two Byzantine successor states, the Empire of Nicaea and the Despotate of Epirus, initially claimed supremacy as "...emperor and autocrat of the Romans." However, after Michael VIII Palaiologos of Nicaea recaptured Constantinople in 1261, the Komnenian use of the style, Emperor, became a sore point. In 1282, John II Komnenos stripped off his imperial regalia before the walls of Constantinople before entering to marry Michael's daughter and accept his legal title of despot. However, his successors used a version of his title, Emperor and Autocrat of the Entire East, of the Iberians and the Peritea until the empire's end in 1461. Byzantine authors, such as Pachymeres, and to some extent Trapezundines such as Lazaropolis and Bessarion, regarded the Trebizond Empire as being no more than a Lazian border state. Thus from the point of view of the Byzantine writers connected with the Lascaris and later with the Palaiologos, the rulers of Trebizond were not emperors. Geography <laughs> <laughs> 
Geographically, the Empire of Trebizond consisted of the narrow strip along the southern coast of the Black Sea and the western half of the Pontic Alps, along with the Gazarian Peritea, or southern Crimea soon losing to Genoese Gazaria and Theodorite Gazaria. The core of the empire was the southern Black Sea coast from the mouth of the Yesi Lirmak River, a region known to the Trapezuntines as Limnia, possibly as far east as Koriki River, a region then known as Lazia. Anthony Breyer has argued that six of the seven banda of the Byzantine theme of Chaldea were maintained in working order by the rulers of Trebizond until the end of the empire, helped by geography. Geography also defined the southern border of this state. The Pontic Alps served as a barrier first to Seljuk Turks and later to Turkoman marauders, whose predations were reduced to a volume that the emperors could cope with. This territory corresponds to an area comprising all or parts of the modern Turkish provinces of Sinop, Samson, Ordu, Giresun, Trabzon, Baybert, Gumashane, Rize, and coastal parts of Artvin. In the 13th century, some experts believe the empire controlled the Gazarian Peritea, which included Cherson and Kerch on the Crimean Peninsula. David Komnenos, the younger brother of the first emperor, expanded rapidly to the west, occupying first Sinop, then coastal parts of Paphlagonia the modern-day coastal regions of Kastamanu, Barton, and Zongudak and Heraclea Pontica the modern-day Caridanes Aragli, until his territory bordered the empire of Nicaea. The expansion was, however, short lived. The territories west of Sinop were lost to Theodore I Lascaris by 1214, and Sinop itself fell to the Seljuks that same year, although the emperors of Trebizond continued to fight for its control over the rest of the 13th century. History Background <inaudible> 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 The city of Trebizond was the capital of the theme of Chaldea. According to the 10th century Arab geographer Abul Feda, it was regarded as being largely a Lazian port. Chaldea had already shown its separatist tendencies in the 10th and 11th centuries, when it came under the control of a local leader named Theodore Gabras, who, according to Anna Komnena, regarded Trebizond and its hinterlands as a prize which had fallen to his own lot and conducted himself as an independent prince. The Byzantine Emperor Alexios I Komnenos confirmed him as governor of Chaldea, but kept his son at Constantinople as a hostage for his good conduct. Nevertheless, Gabras proved himself a worthy guardian by repelling a Georgian attack on Trebizond. One of his successors, Gregory Taranites, also rebelled with the aid of the Sultan of Cappadocia, but he was defeated and imprisoned, only to be made governor once more. Another successor to Theodore was Constantine Gabras, whom Nikitas describes as ruling Trebizond as a tyrant, and whose actions led Emperor John II Komnenos in 1139 to lead an expedition against him. Although that effort came to nothing, this was the last rebel governor known to recorded history prior to the events of 1204. <laughs> Foundation The empire traces its foundation to April 1204, when Alexios Komnenos and his brother David took advantage of the preoccupation of the central Byzantine government with the encampment of the soldiers of the Fourth Crusade outside their walls June 1203 and seized the city of Trebizond and the surrounding province of Chaldea with troops provided by their relative, Tamar of Georgia. Henceforth, the links between Trebizond and Georgia remained close, but their nature and extent have been disputed. However, some scholars believe that the new state was subject to Georgia, at least in the first years of its existence. At the beginning of the 13th century, both men were the grandsons of the last Komnenian Byzantine emperor, Andronikos I Komnenos, by his son Manuel Komnenos and Rusudan, daughter of George III of Georgia. Andronikos I had been deposed by Isaac II Angelos, while Manuel was blinded, a traditional Byzantine punishment for treason, and died not long after. Alexios and his brother, David, ended up at the court of Queen Tamar of Georgia, who gave them military support to return to Byzantine territory. Vasiliev explains that she had been motivated to do so after the Emperor Alexios III Angelos stole the gifts Tamar had given to a group of visiting monks as they passed through Constantinople. While Michel Kurskanskis has argued in support of Vasiliev's interpretation, he disagrees with Vasiliev over the intent of Tamar's intervention. Vasiliev has argued that the Queen intended to create a buffer state to protect the Georgian kingdom, while Kurskanskis believes she supported the brothers in their attempt to reclaim the Byzantine throne in Constantinople. After marching from Georgia, and with the help of their paternal aunt Queen Tamar, Alexios and David occupied Trebizond in April 1204. 
That same month Alexios was proclaimed emperor at the age of 22, an act considered by later writers as the moment the Empire of Trebizond was founded. Up to the civil wars The date Alexios entered Trebizond may be narrowed down even further. Sergei Karpov has identified a lead seal of Alexios, on one side, "...the image of a strategos in the peaked helmet led by hand by St. George", with the inscriptions Alexios Ho Komnenos Alexios Komnenos and Ho Ha Geos Georgios Saint George on either side, on the obverse is a scene of He Hia Anastasis the Holy Resurrection with the corresponding inscription. Karpov interprets the significance of this image and the inscription as portraying the most important achievement of his life, St. George inviting the victorious prince to enter Trebizond and opening the gates of the city with his left hand. The importance of St. George was that Easter—the date of the resurrection—in 1204 fell on 25 April, while the memorial date of St. George was 23 April. So I dared to assume, writes Karpov, that the seal points out the date of the capture of Trebizond. Vasiliev points out that the brothers occupied Trebizond too early to have done so in response to the Crusaders capturing Constantinople. Alexios and David began their march on Trebizond before news of the sack of Constantinople on 13 April 1204 could reach either Trebizond or Georgia. According to Vasiliev, however, their original intention was not to seize a base from which they could recover the capital of the Byzantine Empire, but rather to carve out of the Byzantine Empire a buffer state to protect Georgia from the Seljuk Turks. Kersangskis, while agreeing with Vasiliev that Tamar was motivated by revenge for Alexios Angelos's insult, proposed a more obvious motivation for the brothers' return to Byzantine territory. They had decided to raise the banner of revolt, depose Alexios Angelos, and return the imperial throne to the Komnenos dynasty. However, not long after they had gained control of Trebizond and the neighboring territories, news of the Latin conquest of Constantinople reached them, and the brothers entered the competition for recovery of the imperial city against Theodore I Lascaris in western Anatolia, ruler of the Empire of Nicaea, and Michael Komnenos Doukas in mainland Greece, ruler of the Despotate of Epirus. For most of the 13th century Trebizond was in continual conflict with the Seljuk Sultanate of Rum and later with the Ottoman Turks, as well as Constantinople, the Italian republics, and especially the Republic of Genoa. It was an empire more in title than in fact, surviving by playing its rivals against each other, and offering the daughters of its rulers, who were famed for their beauty, for marriage with generous dowries, especially with the Turkish rulers of inland Anatolia. The common view is that the Empire of Trebizond relied heavily upon wealth gained from its trade with Genoese and Venetian merchants to secure for itself the resources necessary to maintain independence. The second son of Alexios I, Manuel I, preserved internal security and acquired the reputation of a great commander. His accomplishments included capturing Sinop in 1254. He was the first ruler to issue silver coins, which were known as aspers. The destruction of Baghdad by Hulagu Khan in 1258 diverted the western terminus of the Silk Road north to the Black Sea, and due to its link with their local capital at Tabriz, Trebizond accumulated tremendous wealth under the suzerainty of the Mongols. Western travelers used Trebziand as their starting point for journeys into Asia. These travelers included Marco Polo, who returned to Europe in 1295 by way of Trebizond. The troubled reign of Manuel's youngest son John II included a reconciliation with the restored Byzantine Empire and the end of Trapezuntine claims to Constantinople. Trebizond enjoyed a period of wealth and influence during the long reign of John's eldest son Alexios II During his reign, the city of Erzurum was also under Trebizond Empire occupation for a while around the 1310s. From the civil wars to the end of the 14th century Following the death of Alexios II, Trebizond suffered a period of repeated imperial depositions and assassinations, despite a short period of stability under his youngest son Basil Two groups struggled for ascendancy, the Scholaroi, who have been identified as being pro-Byzantine, and the Amitsantarantes, who were identified as representing the interests of the native Archantes. The years 1347–1348 marked the apex of this lawless period. 
The Turks took advantage of the weakness of the empire, conquering Oinayan and besieging Trebizond, while the Genoese seized Carasus. In addition, the Black Death spread from Kaffa to ravage Trebizond and other Pontic cities. Bending under the weight of the disasters that accumulated on his states, Emperor Michael abdicated in 1349 in favor of his nephew, Alexios III, who gradually brought the partisans of both factions under control. Under the rule of Alexios III, Trebizond was considered an important trade center and was renowned for its great wealth and artistic accomplishment. It was at this point that their famous diplomatic strategy of marrying the princesses of the Grand Komnenos to neighboring Turkish dynasts began. However, Anthony Briars has argued against thinking this empire was a wealthy polity, stating that while the income from taxes levied on this trade was, by Byzantine standards, substantial, as much as three quarters of the income of the emperor came from land, either directly from the imperial estates or indirectly from taxes and tithes from other lands. In the 15th century The last years of the 14th century were characterized by the increasing Turkish threat. This threat was not from the small Turkmen emirates that bordered Trebizond's borders, but from the dynasty of the Osmanli, a new Turkish power emerging from western Anatolia that would soon consolidate the Ottoman Empire. Although their expansion was temporarily checked by Tamerlane at the Battle of Ankara in 1402, by the 1430s the Ottomans had recovered their fortunes, seizing large segments of Greece and finally capturing Constantinople itself on 29 May 1453. Manuel III the second son and successor of Alexios III, had allied himself with Tamerlane, but the mighty conqueror soon left Anatolia, and the empire he had built crumbled with his death. His son Alexios IV continued the tradition of political marriages by marrying two of his daughters to rulers of two neighboring Muslim empires, Jihan Shah, Khan of the Kara Koyunlu, and Ali Beg, Khan of the Ak Koyunlu. His eldest daughter Maria became the third wife of the Byzantine Emperor John VIII Palaiologos. Alexios IV's eldest son, John IV (1429–1459), could not help but see that his empire would soon share the same fate as Constantinople. The Ottoman Sultan Murad II first attempted to take the capital by sea in 1442, but high surf made the landings difficult and the attempt was repulsed. While Murad's son and successor, Mehmed II, was away laying siege to Belgrade in 1456, the Ottoman governor of Amasya attacked Trebizond, and although defeated, he took many prisoners and extracted a heavy tribute. Genoese document records the seizure of one of their ships at that port in 1437 by a military galley at the orders of Emperor John IV. John IV prepared for the eventual assault by forging alliances. He sent an envoy to the Council of Florence in 1439, the humanist Georgia Mirautzes, which resulted in the proclamation of the Union of the Catholic and Orthodox Churches, but this proclamation brought little help. He gave his daughter Theodora also known by the name of Despina Cotton to the son of his brother-in-law, Uzan Hassan, Khan of the Ak Koyunlu, in return for his promise to defend Trebizond. He also secured promises of help from the Turkish emirs of Sinop and Karamania, and from the king and princes of Georgia. Through Theodora and the daughter of Alexios IV of Trebizond also named Theodora, the Safavid dynasty of Iran that succeeded the Ak Koyunlu, would be of direct partial Pontic Greek ethnicity from its very beginning. After John's death in 1459, his brother David came to power. David intrigued with various European powers for help against the Ottomans, speaking of wild schemes that included the conquest of Jerusalem. Mehmed II eventually heard of these intrigues and was further provoked to action by David's demand that Mehmed remit the tribute imposed on his brother. Mehmed's response came in the summer of 1461. He collected a sizable army at Bursa, and in a surprise move marched on Sinop, whose emir quickly surrendered. Then the Sultan moved south across eastern Anatolia to neutralize Uzan Hassan. Having isolated Trebizond, Mehmed quickly swept down upon it before the inhabitants knew he was coming, and placed it under siege. The city held out for a month before David surrendered on August 15, 1461. 
With the fall of Trebizond, the last independent remnant of the Byzantine Empire, as well as the Roman Empire from which the Byzantine Empire sprang, was extinguished. In the relatively limited territory of the Kingdom of the Grand Komnenoi, known as the Empire of Trebizond, there was enough room for three dioceses: Trebizond, which was the only diocese established far in the past, Sarasu and Rizion in Lazica, both formed as upgraded bishoprics. All three dioceses survived the Ottoman conquest 1461 and generally operated until the 17th century, when the dioceses of Sarasu and Rizion were abolished. The diocese of Rizion and the bishopric of Av were abolished at the time due to the Islamization of the Laz and of the region respectively. Possibly the diocese of Sarasu was deactivated for the same reasons. In popular culture The Empire of Trebizond acquired a reputation in Western Europe for being enriched by the trade from Persia and the East that passed through its capital, according to Stephen Runciman, and by the silver mines in the hills behind, and famed for the beauty of its princesses. Donald Nicol echoes Runciman's observations most of the emperors were blessed with a progeny of marriageable daughters, and the beauty of the ladies of Trebizond was as legendary as the wealth of their dowries. Its wealth and exotic location endowed a lingering fame on the polity. Cervantes described the eponymous hero of his Don Quixote as imagining himself for the valor of his arm already crowned at least Emperor of Trebizond. Rabelais had his character Picrichol, the ruler of Piedmont, declare, I want also to be Emperor of Trebizond. Other allusions and works set in Trebizond continue into the 20th century. Topic see also List of Trapezuntine emperors Hagia Sophia, Trabzon Samela Monastery Dorothy Dunnett, a Scottish historical novelist, much of whose book The Spring of the Ram is set in Trebizond at the time of its fall. Lawrence Schoonover, an American historical novelist, much of whose book The Burnished Blade is set in Trebizond at its height. The Towers of Trebizond, a novel by Rose Macaulay 1881 topic Notes topic References topic Sources and research topic Primary sources Johannes Bessarion, The Praise of Trebizond Michael Panarettos, Chronicle topic Secondary sources Anthony Breyer and David Winfield, The Byzantine Monuments and Topography of the Pontos Dos, XX, Vol. 1–2, Washington, 1985. Anthony Breyer, Peoples and Settlement in Anatolia and the Caucasus, 800 1900, Variorum Collected Studies Series, London, 1988. Breyer, Anthony. The Empire of Trebizond and the Pontos. London, Variorum Reprints. ISBN 978 0 86078 062 5. Jakob Philipp Falmerayer, Geschichte des Kaiserthums Trapezant, Munich, 1827–1848 George Finlay The History of Greece, From Its Conquest by the Crusaders to Its Conquest by the Turks, and of the Empire of Trebizond, 1204–1461. Edinburgh, Blackwood, 1851. Emil Janssens. Trebizond en Kolchide. Bruxelles, Presses Universitaires de Bruxelles, 1969 Sergei Karpov. L. Impero di Trebisonda, Venezia, Genova e Roma, 1204–1461. Rapporti politici, diplomatici e commerciali. Roma, 1986, 321 p. Sergei Karpov. Trapezunska imperia i zapadnoeuropeski gosudarstva 1204–1461. The Empire of Trebizond and the Nations of Western Europe, 1204–1461. Moscow, 1981, 231 pp. Sergei Karpov. Istoria Trapezonskij Imperii. A History of the Empire of Trebizond. St. Petersburg, 2007, 656 pp. William Miller, Trebizond, The Last Greek Empire, 1926, R.E.P.R. Chicago, Argonaut Publishers, 1968. Donald Queller, Thomas F. Madden, The Fourth Crusade, The Conquest of Constantinople, University of Pennsylvania Press, Philadelphia, 2nd ed., 1997. ISBN 0-8122-3387-5 Savides, Alexios G. K. Istoria tes autocratorias ton megalon komnenon tes trapezontas 1204–1461, tu eta ekdos mi prostheks History of the Empire of the Grand Komnenoi of Trebizond, 1204–1461, second edition with editions in Greek. Thessaloniki, Kyriakidis Brothers S.A. ISBN 978-960-467-121-2. Rustam Shukurov. Veliki Komnini i Vostok 1204. 
1461. The Megas Komnenos and the Orient, 1204 to 1461. Saint Petersburg, 2001, 446 pp. In Russian, ISBN 5-89329-337-1. Levan Arushadze, The Komnenos of Trabzond and the Bagrationi Dynasty of Georgia. J. Saskari. Tbilisi, No. 4, 1991, pp. 144–148, in Georgian. Fyodor Spensky, From the History of the Empire of Trabzond Ocherka is Istori Trapezinskoy Imperii, Leningrad, 1929, 160 pp., a monograph in Russian. Zehiroglu, Amit. M. 2016. Trabzon Imperatorlugu II The Empire of Trebizond Vol. 2 in Turkish. Trabzon, Lazika Yeyan Collectifi. ISBN 978-605-4567-52-2. Further reading Eastman, Antony Art and Identity in Thirteenth-Century Byzantium, Hagia Sophia and the Empire of Trebizond. Routledge. ISBN 0754635759. Eastman, Antony, ed. 2016. Byzantium's Other Empire, Trebizond. Ega Yeyanlari. ISBN 6059388000. External links Media related to Empire of Trebizond at Wikimedia Commons